Good evening, Longview Point family. I'm honored that I get to come and uh, to your homes tonight and open up God's Word and just a privilege to be able to do that for our church family. I pray that it's productive for everyone as we dive into God's Word together. Uh, I will also tell you that we as a staff are here for you. Uh, if you need anything at all uh, during this time, please don't hesitate to call us, text us, email us. Uh, let us know how we can serve you if anything's going on. Uh, with your family. We would love to be able to take care of you and any needs that you may have. So uh, I'm excited to open up God's Word as we, uh, in the student ministry, we've been going through the book of Ephesians, uh, verse by verse, and just knocking it out. And so we're going to continue that over the next few weeks. And right now we're focused on the armor of God. And the armor specific that we're looking at today is the breastplate of righteousness. Um, we've already covered the fact that we are in a spiritual warfare. Uh, that there is a battle that is raging around us. Uh, oftentimes we don't see it, but it is taking place at all times. And then uh, we looked at the belt of truth as well and how important it is that we are grounded in uh, God's truth and not making up uh, false truths of our own. Uh, so our passage of scripture today is the armor of God. It comes from Ephesians chapter 6. We'll look at it and then dive into uh, what it means to have the breastplate of righteousness. It says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me and opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Y'all, tonight we're looking at the breastplate of righteousness. It's interesting, Paul was more than likely in chains next to a Roman guard, and so he's looking at this Roman guard with this breastplate on, protecting him. And so that's where this whole illustration is coming from, this whole metaphor is coming from. But what is righteousness? Uh, there's no sports going on right now, and so we're stuck watching sports movies. And so one of the iconic sports movies is the movie Hoosiers. And the, Hoosiers is a movie, uh, has Gene Hackman in it, and they, um, small, small school in Indiana that plays its way to the state championship for high school basketball. And they walk into the, the gym for the high school championship, and. It is just a massive, massive gym. It's the gym where Butler University plays and it has all this history in it. And it is just huge compared to this small gym that they play in at the, at back at their school. But he does something to, to help them feel comfortable. He, he sets the standard. He goes out on the court and he measures how far it is from the baseline to the free throw line. And then he measures how tall it is from the, the floor to the basketball goal. And, and they realize that the the, the length, the standard is the same, whether it's a big gym, whether it's a small gym, no matter what, it has the same standard. Well, that's the truth for God and his righteousness as well. He has a standard uh, of righteousness. That standard is what is required for people to be acceptable to him. That standard of righteousness, what is required for people to be acceptable to God. And it doesn't change. It is a standard. It is the same all the time. We can't change it to make it meet uh, what we want it to meet. We can't uh, compare ourselves to others and think that, well, we're more righteous than them. And so we're OK. There is a standard that God has made because of his holiness, because of his perfection that we need to realize and understand. The truth is we have a problem when we think we can be good enough to be righteous. When we think that it is our own self-righteousness 
that allows us to enter into the kingdom of heaven, that allows us to be righteous. The question is always, how good is good enough? And the truth is, there's, there's not anything that we can do to be good enough. Even if I sold everything that I own, even if I sold my house, my car, uh, every possession in my, that, that I own at this moment, it still wouldn't be good enough to, to go to heaven. If I did that and sold it to the poor, it wouldn't be good enough because we would realize that even in what seems like a selfless act, my motives would be selfish. There would be parts of my, my heart that would keep me from truly being righteous in what God has called us to be. Another way that we think that we can be righteous is if we just meet certain guidelines. If we go through the Ten Commandments and say, well, I've never committed murder before, or I've never committed adultery before, or I've never done this, or I've never done that. But Christ doesn't give us that option. We as a staff are, are memorizing through the Sermon on the Mount right now, and um, Christ really calls us to a higher standard of righteousness than even what the, the Ten Commandments says. He says that if we have hate in our heart, then it's like we've committed murder. He says that if we have lust, then it's like we've committed adultery. Like we have committed those sins in our hearts because we can't meet the righteousness and meet those guidelines. As I was thinking about righteousness, I thought about the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10. And in Mark chapter 10, he comes to, to Christ and Christ, uh, or he asks, you know, what is good? We'll flip over there and read it. It says in Mark chapter 10, Verses 17 through 27. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. You see, the, the rich young ruler went away sad because his hope was that he had fulfilled the law, but the truth was he wasn't willing to follow Christ. He wasn't willing to to sacrifice these other things that, that he saw that was good um, for the greater good of following after Jesus. And it demonstrates that our righteousness is like filthy rags. Our righteousness is constantly falling short and that we cannot hope in fulfilling the law either. That we realize that every single one of us have broken it. Every single one of us falls short of the glory of God and all of us need a righteousness outside of ourselves. So how do we meet God's standards of righteousness? How can we do that? If, if this rich young ruler who claimed to meet everything of the law is not able to do it, if um, we can't sell everything we have, if we can't be good enough, how do we meet God's right, standard of righteousness? The answer is it has to be given to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 it, it makes this very, very clear. It says, For our sake, He, God the Father, made Him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. In Him we might become the righteousness of God. It has been given to us. If you are in Christ, then you receive His righteousness, not our own. Where ours falls short, His is perfect. Where we can't meet it, he has already met it, and yet he clothes us in his own righteousness. The amazing thing is, I love how the New Testament and the Old Testament tie together. The New Testament, um, Paul is talking here about the breastplate of righteousness, but he's pointing back to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17. If you read all of 59, uh, you see the sinfulness of the people of Israel 
And then you see a Messiah that is coming. And one of the things that's described for this Messiah is this is a Messiah who puts on a breastplate of righteousness. See, it's his breastplate that we are able to put on as well. We go from ratty, dirty, whole filled clothes, clothes to wearing royal robes and being called a child of the king. I think about those dirty clothes that, that we have, whether it's stuff that we use for landscaping and, you know, you've already, it's already got the stains all over it. It may have uh, holes in it from getting caught on things. It may be stretched out. It may be faded. You may not even be able to read the writing on it anymore. And you have those clothes that are, are tattered and, and worn. And yet you're trading those clothes in of, of your dirty, nasty unrighteousness. And instead, you're getting to wear royal robes as a child of the king. You see, I think so many times we forget that Christ died to save us from every aspect of our sin. We were born into sin, uh, have a lot of practice at ungodliness, and yet Christ makes us new and breaks us free from the power of sin, from the presence of sin, from the penalty of sin, all those things are taken away from us because Christ has overcome it on our behalf. I hope that encourages you tonight that as you're thinking about the sin in your past, that there is nothing too great that Christ cannot forgive us for and that he hasn't freed us from already. That we, through Christ, through his righteousness, are able to overcome that sin that so easily entangles us. So why does he look at us with the breastplate of righteousness? Why is it important to the battle? One, if you're looking at that Roman soldier that we were talking about earlier, it protected all of his vital organs. It was something from his neck down to his thighs. It was something that was seen as important every day that he went into battle. He knew that he needed to have that on to be prepared for what uh, the day held for him. It was protecting vital organs, vital things that, that they, they were looking at um, in order for him to have life. Well, that's true for us too. It's protecting us with our emotions and our desires. The, the things that drive our actions, the breastplate of righteousness, when we put that on, then it's impacting everything with our uh, emotions and our desires so that it's all uh, focused more on him and living out a righteous life. We talked about the belt of truth. Really, the breastplate of righteousness is putting that truth into action. It's not just letting it be a mental thing, but it's being something that impacts every part of our being. That God's truth is going deep into our heart, and so our actions are shaped by His truth and His Word. We have His righteousness, but there's still a battle that is raging on. A battle that we are having to fight on a daily basis that we can't overlook, that we don't need to uh, belittle, that we need to look at a way that we can live out the righteousness that He's given us. Not just that foundation of, of righteousness, but how we act on it, how it's a practical righteousness as well that comes from Christ. It's kind of like God has, has planted the seed of righteousness in our heart and, and we want to water it with the word of God's truth and, and let it to grow. And that growth is us acting on it, us living it out. Remember, though, that this is not a battle of determination. It's not a battle of our, our flesh. It's not just simply strapping up your bootstraps and, and saying that you can do better. Because if that's what you count on, you're going to fail. It has to be rooted in Christ's righteousness and trusting him and his word and allowing that to shape us and who we are. Adrian Rogers told a story about a, a man uh, who was on a diet. And as he was on this diet, he uh, decided that he was not going to have donuts on the diet. That sounds like a pretty rough diet at times, but one that he decided he needed to keep. And so he um, drove by a donut shop every single day on his way to work. And he was decided, okay, and, and, and I'm going to make sure that I don't eat any donuts. And so, but, but God, I'll make an exception if there is a parking spot open right at the front of the donut shop. And so at the third time, of course, there was a donut shop, or there was a spot open there at the donut shop, and he pulled in and, and gave in to it. You see, he was trying to fight that battle in his own strength instead of trusting in Christ's righteousness through that. 
You see, during the quarantine right now, as you're spending more time at home, for many of you, you may find yourself with more time. You may find yourself um, with freedom that you haven't had before. Students, I challenge you. Parents, I challenge you. Spend that time studying God's Word. Spend that time reading books to understand Christ better, to understand what it means to walk with Him, to understand what righteous living looks like. Like, take advantage of this time. Families meet together and spur one another on into to Christ likeness so that we're having these conversations. We're having fun together as families, whether it's family game night, whether it's, um, you know, having a, a time of family worship together. But take this time and, and allow the breastplate of righteousness to be like put it on every single day, being focused on the things of the Lord. But you may not be one that has more time. You may be one that is trying to figure out how to do school online. You may be one who uh, your job is still requiring you to, to work long hours. You may be one that you're trying to figure out child care. There's so many different things that could be causing stress and anxiety and worry. But don't let that crowd out the breastplate of righteousness in your life either. Take the time to put that on every single day, that it is, it is an action that you are putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Instead of consuming yourself with the news of the world, start by consuming yourself with the truths of God's word. Focused on who he is, that he is the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, reigning supreme, and he is the Holy One who has made a way for us to be righteous and to put on the breastplate of righteousness. But I also challenge you as you fight this battle, this battle for righteousness, do not leave any room for unrighteousness in your life. Don't wave the white flag on any front, but instead fight fiercely for your holiness and the righteousness in your life. Because every step of unrighteousness, every compromise that you make just leads to more compromise. God has called us to holiness and to righteousness. And, and I think it's often the little compromises, the, the things that we let go, the, the, the things that we say aren't really a big deal that one day lead to things that are massive failures and things that, that can ruin our lives. So don't make light of sin. Don't make light of unrighteous acts, but instead seek righteousness. Pursue it with all of your being. You know, if we're using the illustration of a breastplate, realize that a breastplate filled with holes is not very useful, that it's going to have issues when it is under attack. But yet this breastplate of righteousness that God has given us is one that is perfect and good. Adrian Rogers also says that the most, miserable Christ, uh, the most miserable person in the world is a Christian who's out of fellowship with the Lord. And our disobedience will cause us to lose our joy and our fruitfulness. My challenge for you with everything that's going on in the world is to be obedient, to follow after the Lord's calling on your life, chase after his will. So many times we think of righteousness simply as avoiding sin but yet our righteousness is also doing what God has commanded us to do. And so seek out people that are hurting. Show them love. Love one another uh, so that people will see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Be men and women of righteousness. So our point tonight is trust in Christ for your righteousness and live it out in your daily life. Let it impact everything that you think, say, and do, and let that be for God's glory. I have some questions because I would love for you as families to continue to have some discussion about what we've talked about tonight with this breastplate of righteousness. Um, just four questions for you to take and, and talk about with your family there at your home. Uh, question number one, when do you find yourself most likely to compromise on your pursuit of righteousness? Is there a certain time? Is there certain things that are going on in your life that lead you down that path more? Number two, how have you learned to combat sin and temptation? Realize that this is a spiritual battle that is taking place in our life every single day. So that breastplate of righteousness needs to go on. It is an action that we put it on. 
So, how are you combating temptation and sin? Not under your own power, but under Christ's righteousness. Number three, when you sin, do you feel the conviction of the Lord? Going back to that Adrian Rogers quote about how uh, the most miserable person is a Christian who's been disobedient. If that's us, then we should feel conviction when we sin. But the final thing is this. Is there something God is calling you to do? Is there somebody he's, he's call, put on your heart to, to share the gospel with? Is there somebody who he's called for you to, to care for that may not be able to get out of their house at this point? Is there a sin you need to confess or is there forgiveness that you need to ask somebody for? There's so many ways that God can be leading you. But talk about that as a family and see how you as a family, as an individual, can put on the breastplate of righteousness. Like I said at the beginning, we are here for you as a staff. If there's anything that we can do, uh, please don't hesitate to let us know in, in any way that you can. And we are praying for, for us to get back together quickly as a church family and uh, long for that day. Let me pray for us. Father God, we thank you so much uh, for the technology that you've given us to where we can open up your word. We can see uh, your truth and uh, we can share it with people all over the world as well. Uh, so, Father, I pray for this time that we have together, that it will be a sweet time, uh, that the conversations that will take place afterwards will uh, just do some incredible things in our hearts as well. And, Father, if there are people who are seeing this that don't know you, uh, that you will draw them to you, that they will understand their need for your righteousness, and that you will get glory for everything that we do. It's all in your holy name we pray. Amen.